Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about my, my past and my history so you know why it is I'm so passionate about helping my fellow human being. When I was about 17 years old, I was diagnosed in a, as a manic depressive by my local psychiatrist after I had had so many different things go on in my life that I didn't want to sleep anymore. I was a very active kid, uh, you know, straight A student. I had a job, I had money. As a kid, I did fine, but I was always on the go, never wanted to, to uh, slow down. My parents were concerned, so they took me to their medical physician, who ended up referring them or referring me to a med uh, to a psychiatrist. And as a result, I ended up on uh, lithium, which wasn't working, and consequently was um, what I thought would be a, a quick trip to St. Vincent's Hospital in Manhattan ended up being six weeks of my life. I was locked away in a mental institution for six weeks as a kid, and I didn't get out till October of my senior year of high school, which means I missed my senior first semester in high school, which caused me a lot of anxiety and depression because I felt... Um, I felt like I was a nut. I mean, I didn't know what was wrong with me. I didn't think there was anything wrong with me, but they were telling me there was. Consequently, they ended up putting me on four different medications. Haldol, lithium, Thorazine, and Tegretol. Now, if you don't know what, just to give you an example of how potent these medications were, Thorazine is what they used to knock out elephants on safari. <laughs> Seriously. They, used to, they gave me so much of this stuff, they couldn't knock me out. It used to drive the nurses crazy. So they, I'd be running around the hall at night in, the, uh, in St. Vincent's Hospital on 14th Street in Manhattan, and they were saying, why can't we knock I know out? What's up with this kid? We can't knock this kid out. I just refused to be knocked out by the drugs. As it went, I finally got out of the hospital, and um, for two years, I rode the drug highway. I did not want to take these drugs. I never wanted to be on these drugs, but my parents, trusting their physicians, as we all do, did what they were told. And it's interesting, uh, by the time I was about 19, I still wasn't making any progress. I was still depressed. I was anxious. I had ballooned up to 240 pounds. And I was six hours away from electroshock therapy. Now, by the grace of God, one of my high school guidance counselors who cared very deeply for me called my mother and father at 11 o'clock the evening before and encouraged them not to have Tom shocked. So because of this good friend of mine, who still remains a friend today, he saved my life and I was not electroshocked. But I was about six hours away from it. So why do I tell you this? Well, number one, it's probably the deepest, darkest secret that I have in my life. And as I've grown and matured and blossomed as a human being, I found that the best way to, I guess, bear my soul to people is to tell them my deepest, deepest darkest secrets. So now there, there's nothing I can say to you anymore that would embarrass me. So I've learned to just embrace it so it doesn't even embarrass me anymore. What I'm hoping to do is change lives and let people know when you tell me you're depressed or anxious, I've been there. It took me two years. Now let me tell you the story gets a little better. So what happened was, I was about 19 and I was on these antidepressant medications. It took me about a year and a half before I would leave, the, leave my home. I was afraid to go outside because everybody knew I was nuts. And I was embarrassed. But after about a year and a half, I, I found the courage to go back to school. I started going to college. And um, I remember one day I came home and I was fed up. I was still depressed. I was still anxious. I had no interest in uh, dating. I was afraid to go out of the house. And, I, and I, I remember getting up and saying, you know, if this is the rest of my life, I don't want this life. I quit. So it's time for me to make a decision about what to do. So what I did is I took the medications and in a rainstorm in my backyard in Brooklyn, where I was raised, in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, proud to be a New Yorker, I took the drugs and I poured them down the drain. I was 19. And I watched them wash down the drain. And that was about 29 years ago, and I swore I'd never take another drug that I have it. And that was 29 years ago. So here I am at 48 years old, telling you this story. So what happened as a result of that, now many people would have seen that as a failure. And they would have said, woe is me, poor me, everybody should feel sorry for me because, you know, I've been through this tough time. I took it and I spun it around. And I asked myself, why did I go through this? What was the reason for this? Why would this happen to me? What was the silver lining in this cloud? And what I realized was that I was being tested by whomever or whatever to see what I was made of. Because in my opinion, adversity brings out the best in all of us. And I'm sure that most of you would agree, if you were not pushed by someone or something, you would never grow. Mm -hmm. So I had a life and death decision to make and I chose to live. 
And then one day I healed my own depression and anxiety. I threw those pills down the drain and I decided to heal and I healed that day. And as a result of that, it put me on my quest to serve people. See, there's nothing more important to me than the fundamental desire to help. I've been like this my whole life. I love helping people and I love making a difference. So as I began to educate myself about what it was that might be causing my problems, I began to study the body, I began to study healing, and I began to question why it is that people took medications, and why we got sick, and why shouldn't my body heal itself. And it put me on a path to understanding wellness. So I enrolled in chiropractic college in my early 20s, and I studied chiropractic philosophy, and it made sense to me, so I became a chiropractor. So in my late 20s, I started treating patients, and I started finding something very interesting. You take 10 people with a misalignment in the spine, you adjust 7 out of the 10, they get better, but 3 didn't. So why would not everybody get better when I would treat them? And what I started to find as I began to investigate was that what you ate and how you thought affected how you got well. So I began to incorporate in different types of levels of knowledge to understand what I could do to get people better. I began to use nutrition. I found that people that ate Twinkies and Ding Dongs and Ho Ho's didn't get, it's good to laugh, you can laugh if you want. They didn't get better as well as people that were eating, you know, raw foods and nutritious foods and vegetables and good healthy proteins. And then I took it a step further and realized that if the food was organic, it was better. And now here we are in the age of GMO foods, which I'm sure Liana will probably touch on when she gets up here. GMO foods, if you're not familiar with that, are, are genetically modified organisms. They're no longer considered food, and our body doesn't recognize them as food. They're actually poisons. And if you're not up on this, hopefully Leon will share a little bit on that and when she gets up here. But now the toxins we have in our environment are the very foods that we think are healthy for us, that we don't even know if they're GMO, GMO foods or not because nobody has to label them yet, but we're going to change that. And as the years have progressed and I've continued to treat people, the questions got a little bit deeper about what it is that I could do to help my, my fellow patient. And as a result of my quest, after many years of treating patients, I found something called nutrition response testing. That's my end of the lecture for today. What I utilize is a procedure where through physical examination of your body using muscle testing and homeopathy and nutrition, I can find and fix whatever is missing in your body that does not allow your body to heal or express 100% of its function and its health. And when you wonder what's the value in that, well, think about all the things you put in and on your body. Do you know if they're good for your body? Do you know if they're going to work when you take them? When you take your vitamins and supplements and you spend your hard-earned money and hundreds of dollars on these nutrient supplements, do you know if they're working or not? Well, I didn't know either until I started testing my patients. And what I began to find is that what works for you is not going to work for you. And what works for you is not going to work for you. So basically, we're all individuals and all unique, and we need unique approach to health so that we can find the underlying cause of our problems in our bodies. And that's what led me to this discussion of nutrition response testing. So just real quick before I bring Leon up, I just want to mention that why do you need nutrition response testing? Well, basically, there are many things that block us from healing, and things need to be found out as to whether or not they're present. For example, do you have heavy metal toxicity? Do you have food allergies? Do you have problems with underlying immune challenges that you're not aware of? Are scars from surgical procedures or on your body affecting your health? And do you have a problem with anything going on with chemicals or pesticides or herbicides or toxins or things that you breathe or, or you know, smelled or taken in the environment? If those things are present in your body and they're not removed, your body will remain sick. And you'll take all the supplements in the world, but if your body is toxic, you don't get better. Now, I'm going to bring Liana up here in a second, but I just want to share something about Liana. I don't think she'll mind it so much if I bring it up. Now, Liana, you're going to hear her story. It's a great story. And you have to applaud her courage and her veracity as a younger person to go out there and find the truth. Now, Liana eats a very healthy diet. She's raw, she's vegan, and she enjoys eating just things from the earth. And she really does this all the time. And yet you say, if somebody eats like that and is always pure in their body, they couldn't have anything wrong with them. Well, it's funny, when Leon and I became friendly, because we both have um, uh, a mutual friend, Dr. Leonard Colwell, who, if you don't know him, I'll, bring, I'll talk about him later. He's cured more people of cancer naturally than anybody else on this planet that I'm aware of. He's got 45,000 cured patients on record with a 92% 
success ratio. And you may have not heard of him because he's from Germany, and he's only been in the States since around the year 2000. He's both a friend and a mentor to myself and Liana. We are very close to Dr. Colwell. And the reason why I bring this up is that we all talk about why, why is it that we get cancer, why is it that we get sick. Well, I am on the quest to figure all this out, and I will come up with some more answers as things come along. But getting back to Liana, so she's a healthy girl as far as she knows, and she came in for an examination with me. I said, Liana, I know you're healthy, and I know you live a healthy lifestyle, but how do you know that there's nothing going on in your body until you have an exam to find out? So she came in. She came in to get examined and didn't tell me anything about it. I purposely didn't even take her history because I didn't want to be swayed by anything she would tell me. And I put her on the table and I examined her. And we found weakness from here down to here in her body through examination. Tonsils, her heart, her, uh, you know, her head. And I found chlorine toxicity in her body. I said, you have toxicity from chlorine. She goes, you know, my skin has been itchy. The last couple of weeks, I didn't know why. I said, that's the chlorine toxicity. Mm -hmm. So even though she lives a very healthy lifestyle and she eats very well, she was walking around with chlorine toxicity. So what we did is we examined her. We checked the right nutrients that would fix the chlorine problem. They tested well on her body. We sent her home with the, the supplements she needed. And she texted me within a day or so saying, I can't believe how much better I feel since you gave me those supplements. So my point of this is that no matter how well you feel, even if you feel phenomenal, I want you to have the recipe to get at least 100 years out of these bodies. Seriously. No joke. You know, that's the goal. You should get a good 100 years out of this body at least so that you can enjoy this life and enjoy your personal journey. And that's the goal we have for our patients right now. And I will talk more about that later on. But for the time being, I want to bring up a very special young lady. She and I have recently become very good friends. Um, she's going to tell you her own story, and I'd like to give you her. Uh, give, give, I'd like you to give her your undivided attention. Please bring up Liana Watergrave. Thank
I didn't even know that that was possible. I thought tumors like grew over time. But no, this was just there one day. It was in my lymphatic system. A precancerous tumor, basically like a time bomb, ready to turn cancerous and spread at any time. So I had learned from when I was younger that there are natural alternatives and that they are a possibility. We can either take chemo and radiation and pharmaceutical drugs, or we can do the natural approach with actually proper nutrition from foods. There are so many natural alternatives out there like massage and colonics and bentonite clay. And I explored a lot of them. And in three months, the tumor was completely gone. Completely. And so now I just travel the world and spread and share this story and share the recipes that I've developed and found and <coughs> along the way and just to make health easier for all of us. Because whether we want to like lose weight, to feel good, to look good, our health, our individual health is also so necessary for the entire planet. Like I know I have a responsibility to all of you to be healthy. Because if I'm healthy within myself, I'm sustainable, I can be my own doctor. Yeah, it's great to have natural doctors, absolutely. Because if we're not in tune with our body, how can we tell what's going on? So it's great to be able to have someone who's so like an expert in nutritional testing, mind-blowing what he does. Come and see the booth, he'll do a demonstration later, right? Sure. Great. So basically, yeah. I think that health is really necessary on the planet. The um, majority of people are sick and dying daily of cancer and depression and disease and diabetes and just mm -hmm. suffering. Like, how do you feel when you wake up in the morning? Are you like, yes, my body feels great, mm -hmm. I feel energized, I feel alive? <laughs> or is it like, oh, I don't want to get out of bed, like I have excess baggage? And I don't believe that that's our natural state. I believe our natural state is our natural state of like joy and at ease, healthy, blissful. Mm -hmm. So eating real foods makes this all possible. I'm all for real foods as opposed to genetically modified foods, as opposed to processed foods. And here's the thing, eating organic is cheaper than not. Eating organic foods is much cheaper than chemo or radiation. Mm -hmm. Eating organic foods is much cheaper than cancer much cheaper and we can make real raw chocolate with three ingredients three and if we can all remember these three ingredients and here comes nadine with some giant blow ups of real food <laughs> okay we'll get back to the chocolate but here's the cheesecake now does that even look like health food <coughs> This looks like creamy deliciousness dessert, and it is dessert, but I eat this for breakfast if I feel like it. I eat this for dinner if I feel like it. And people always come to me and say, okay, I have this, and I want to heal this, and I want to lose weight. You know, what should I eat? What should I do? And I'm like, well, here's some recipes, but eat what you feel like. If you feel like pizza, eat it because you want it, and you should get what you want, but here's the thing, eat it as clean as possible. So go for organic, go for things that aren't processed, go for things that don't have chemicals and poisons because you're only going to pay for it. There's only so long we can eat processed foods and get away with it. Yeah, we can change the frequency with our thoughts and our mind, but only for so long. If you eat a hamburger every day, you're definitely going to experience the benefits of it. So this is even raw. This hasn't even been cooked. This is living food. This has us feel energized and fulfilled and when we eat processed foods, we can usually eat double the amount of what we can eat raw foods. Because processed foods are hollow foods full of like synthetic chemicals. Okay, so processed foods are hollow foods. So what happens is when we eat processed foods, it goes to our digestive system. And our digestive system takes no nutrients from it. So it sends a message to the brain and says, oh, I'm still hungry. I need to eat more food. So hence the vicious cycle and we can keep eating and eating and binge eating on junk foods. The thing is when we eat things like raw foods that are so nutrient dense, they're completely fulfilling for the body. So we end up eating less of them, but feeling so good. Okay, so the base of this is made with macadamia nuts, coconut, and dates. 
So you just mix that together and it forms a nice, like, sticky paste. That can be a pie, a pie crust for anything. Then you can fill it with this. Now get this. This, the filling, is made with cashews, water, lemon, maple syrup or honey, you choose, and vanilla bean. Five ingredients! That's it. And you put it in a, a food processor and you pour it into the pie base and you set that in the fridge and it's ready. Raw foods are ready like that. It's eight ingredients in that entire cheesecake. Cheaper than cancer, I remember, because when we eat this way, we build our bodies from this. Whatever we eat daily and put on our skin and absorb from our environment becomes our bodies. Because they're the new cells in our bodies and they build our body. So for the last four years, I've been living this lifestyle and I've been building my body off the most divine, organic, whole, real foods. And I feel the best I ever have. Energy, I feel good, I feel harmonious. The thing is, when we eat bad foods, we think bad thoughts, just naturally. When we eat something that's really bad, we know it. Innately, we know it. And then the negative thoughts come. When we eat good foods, we think good thoughts because we're investing in ourselves. also. If we're spending like $5 on a piece of raw cheesecake, we're like, yeah, awesome. I'm putting this into my body. I deserve it because I have a great body. I'm here. I'm human. I'm alive. It's 2012. Let's be healthy. Let's feel good. And this kind of food, it leads to a lot of weight loss and effortless weight loss effortless and the idea is that when we eat proper real foods and proper nutrition every day our body returns to its natural state disease free at ease and any excess weight that's been accumulated from processed foods drops bodies completely change incredible so okay people come to me and ask what well, I just want to be healthy where can I start ah there's so much information what should I do and I say okay Every day from here on for the rest of your life, even if you just did this one thing, one thing, it would make an epic difference. And that is lemon water. Mm -hmm. Just squeeze a lemon into a cup of water, organic if possible. Obviously, it's a process and having a non-organic lemon is better than having no lemon. But obviously organic is always best because it uses less chemicals and pesticides, but a lemon water every day. 